time to go over the last week in PlayStation from the week beginning the 15th of June. I'm going to try to keep this up every Sunday so please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It would really mean a lot and it helps with the channel. We've got some interesting things to go over this week, a possible leaked image of the PS5, some more info on the PS5's UI and a great game that's free to keep forever but you can only claim it until Thursday the 25th. With all that out of the way, let's talk about what's happened. The PlayStation 5 might have already got accidentally leaked. A listing went up on Amazon France potentially showing the release date and price of the PlayStation 5. You can see here from the image it says it will cost 500 euros and will be coming out on November 20th. It's entirely possible that this is incorrect information, but it definitely would fall in line with some of the rumours we've been hearing about the PlayStation 5's holiday 2020 release. This listing also had the digital edition up for 400 euros, which has me a little sceptical considering does removing the disk drive warrant such a steep price difference? I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Sony says about pricing when they reveal how much the PlayStation 5 will cost in the coming months. I'm curious to see if this listing is actually correct. It seems very legit, but like I say, a full hundred euros difference is steep for not having a disk drive. I'll definitely be getting a regular PS5 and I talked about why I've made that decision in a previous video. Our next bit of news comes from Simon Rutter, Sony's EVP for Europe, and this information will probably be great news for dedicated PlayStation fans who love all the blockbusters you can only get on a Sony system. What he said was, Sony exclusive games are hugely important, more important I think than they've ever been. Through their proximity to the system's designers, PlayStation Studios are able to really extract the most out of the system's performance and that's a really valuable attribute for a platform holder to have. PlayStation can rely on a studio network that can really show off the innovations that we're trying to put across. When these exclusives are as powerful as Marvel Spider-Man or Horizon, they are important games that people want to play. This gives us a nice little bit of insight into what Sony really thinks about PlayStation 5. It's not all about tech specs and having a higher number of teraflops than other consoles available. It's about the games. I honestly love this approach, I think it's very very sensible. It shows Sony are in tune with what people want. It's definitely a very Nintendo approach to making a system sell. Obviously the difference between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X isn't as drastic as the difference between the Nintendo Switch and those two consoles, but what I mean by it's a very Nintendo way of selling a console is that the great quality games will move your system. For example, when the Switch came out in 2017, I got one right away because I had to have Breath of the Wild. I can picture a very similar situation here. Sony have established a great lineup of exclusive titles, and when it comes down to buying a PS5 or a Series X this holiday, I can see Spider-Man Miles Morales moving systems. On the topic of Spider-Man Miles Morales, I'd like to add there was a bit of confusion regarding what the game actually is. People assumed from the trailer it was Spider-Man 2, but Sony Interactive Entertainment's EVP head of European business Simon Rutter described Spider-Man Miles Morales as an expansion and an enhancement to the previous game. This led to some reports claiming the game to be a remaster of Spider-Man PS4 with extra content thrown in. Naturally this got people a little riled up when they thought they'd be, have to be purchasing the PS4 game all over again. But Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier went on to Twitter to say Spider-Man Miles Morales is actually going to be a brand new standalone game similar in scope to Uncharted Lost Legacy, which makes a lot more sense. I mean, we've seen the trailer and it looks visually stunning, so there isn't much of a reason to be upset from the news. The game will be shorter than Spider-Man PS4, but if it's 10 hours long, it will be 10 quality hours. This also kind of gives us an indication that the next Spider-Man game after this will be on a much grander scale, and this is going to be a nice taste of what PlayStation 5 can deliver in terms of a Spider-Man game. I mean, if you've played Infamous First Light, Uncharted Lost Legacy, those spin-off games, Sony don't let those smaller titles dip in quality, they're still great experiences. On Monday we learned a little bit of information regarding the PlayStation 5's user interface. Sony's VP of UX Design at PlayStation, Matt McLaren, is promising that the user interface on the PlayStation 5 will be completely overhauled. This all stemmed from a LinkedIn thread and he went as far as describing the new software interface as a very interesting evolution of the OS, a 100% overhaul of the PS4 UI and some very different new concepts. As its UI, it's practical first, but it's a whole new visual language and a complete re-architecting of the user interface. The new PS5 OS is more subtle than flashy, but no pixel is untouched. This is great because 
I find one of the most exciting things about getting a new generation of systems is seeing what the menus look like, seeing what stayed the same and what new features you can get to play around with. Sony has always been pretty good with system UIs in the past and the PS5 can only be faster and better. A bit of good news for people excited about CD Projekt Red's upcoming game Cyberpunk 2077 is that if you purchase the game for the current gen PS4 you will get the upgrade to next gen for free. I feel like this is a generous move for any developers because nobody is forcing them to make that decision but it definitely makes anyone who does it look good in the eyes of consumers. This was nice to find out after yet again Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed. It was meant to come out in the second half of September on the 17th and unfortunately has been pushed back to the 19th of November. Am I disappointed? Definitely. I mean it feels like we've been waiting an eternity for this game to release but my attitude with delays is if a game needs more time the worst thing you can do is fire it out the door and expect it to succeed. There's the old saying you can't rush art and game development is no different. I'd way rather an insanely impressive version of the game than one that's just meeting a deadline for the sake of it. Cyberpunk 2077's original release date was April 16th so it now being November can be frustrating but it's definitely for the best. The Last of Us 2 came out on Friday and I'm kinda sad I haven't got it yet. I'll definitely be picking it up soon and sharing my thoughts on it. What's really annoying me though is the game is being review bombed because people are salty over the story. That's ridiculous and toxic. The game has been getting near perfect reviews across the board from a huge amount of review sites but the user review score is getting review bombed. If you aren't happy with the story that doesn't make the game bad. It is as easy as that. The extreme amount of effort put into developing the game by the talented developers over at Naughty Dog shouldn't be overshadowed by people hating the plot. There's certainly a bit of the bandwagon effect happening here too, where people are all just joining together. I haven't even played the game yet, but it's just common sense. That's not the best reason to give a game a really low score. A more lighthearted bit of news is that the PlayStation 5 is really big. I find this kind of funny because a picture which is allegedly of the PlayStation 5 on the factory line has been making the rounds on the internet and it's massive. You can see here that the PlayStation 5 is definitely a tall device. There is a possibility however that this is a fake image but it doesn't seem too far off from other things we've found out about the PlayStation 5 size. There's another image going around that compares the PlayStation 5 to a good few other consoles. You can see it's scaled by measuring the Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive and the USB port on the front of the PlayStation 5. The fact it's a good bit bigger than the original fat PS3 is pretty funny to me because one, I have the fat PS3 and it's pretty heavy for a video game console and two, because the fat PS3 has always had a reputation for being one of the biggest consoles you can get and all of a sudden it's being overshadowed by the PlayStation 5. When the PS5 Slim inevitably comes out I'm going to be jealous of people owning it because this PlayStation 5 is going to take up quite a bit of space. Our last bit of news is that Injustice Gods Among Us developers Netherrealm have made their game free to go and grab. It's the ultimate edition and if you're into fighting games or just getting started, Injustice is really great. There is a catch however, you only have until the 25th of June to add the game to your library. That's Thursday but once you add it to your library it is yours to keep forever. I just want to remind everybody watching that your free monthly PS Plus games for the month of May are Call of Duty World War 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. May's lineup is very solid, particularly Call of Duty World War 2. I remember when that game launched back in 2017. It was one of the Call of Duty games that I've sunk the most amount of time into. The campaign is really great as far as Call of Duty campaigns go and the multiplayer is essentially endless fun if first person shooters are your thing. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is meant to be a really good game too but I haven't played it yet because I'm not too into Star Wars but I've heard it's a solid game. Hopefully next Sunday we'll have July's free games announced for me to give my thoughts on whatever they end up being. Well that was the last week of PlayStation number one. I'm gonna try my best to keep this up weekly because it's nice to have your PlayStation news condensed into one quick video to keep you in the loop. Hopefully this week we get some new interesting PlayStation 5 information I can cover because I'm itching to get more news about Sony's upcoming system. Thanks for watching, I've been Anthony Joseph Gaming and I'll catch you in the next one.